Okay, so right now we'll be doing a uh, chapter two where we'll be discussing energy, energy transfer and general analysis. So for the content we're doing chapter two. So let me start with a conceptual question. So this question would be, let's say I have a refrigerator and uh, I keep it inside this well sealed and well insulated room plugging into an electrical outlet and I open up this refrigerator's door. All right, so the question is, would this, uh, would the temperature of the room increase or decrease? Because the refrigeration, uh, uh, a fridge basically cools down the items inside. But at the same time, how the fridge works is there's also a radiator at the back that radiates heat. So this is this answers the question. If I use this as a cooling method, do you think the temperature would rise or fall? Before I answer this, you may try to pause this video and then think about it yourself. Uh. So a hint would be to do conservation of energy. So you just think about it. All right. So the answer would be because it's powered by the electricity. And then in this closed system, we don't see the electricity. You don't see the component electricity, but the fridge is still drawing electricity, which means electrical power is going in. Then let's say none of the the power, the energy inside is conserved. So what does it mean? That means there's only energy in adding in. And this means that, this would mean that total energy should actually increase. That means the heat energy should actually increase and temperature increases. Alright? So this is just a conceptual question and this will relate to um, the first law of thermodynamics. There are many forms of energy. There's heat energy, mechanical energy, kinetic, potential energy, magnetic energy, chemical energy, and many more. So we'll be discussing many of these forms in the next few slides. And next we need to talk about uh, internal energy. So on a microscopic level, when a molecule moves back and forth, gains height, lowers down in the height, so it's very difficult to measure individual particles like how fast they move, how much energy do they have, like what's the kinetic energy of this particle when there's so many particles inside, like in a given volume. Therefore, we use internal energy to describe microscopic energies. Uh. Alright, so internal energy could be uh, in the form of maybe molecular translation, rotation, all of this. Uh. Okay, and there's also kinetic energy, potential energy. And in the first equation over here, basically, I'm trying to say the total energy can be expressed in this form. So that's internal energy plus kinetic energy plus potential energy. Okay, and this is written as u plus half mv squared plus mgz. Okay, you, go, you also can know this mgh, uh, basically z is the height. Okay, so this is based on mass. So if you want uh, mass dependent, is, is this is the first equation. Independent of mass, right, is over here because you see it's per unit mass one. Okay, so you just basically remove the mass. Alright, so that's the second equation. So now some physical insights into internal energy. So basically internal energy, there's a few forms. So there's sensible energy, latent energy, chemical, nuclear energy. Alright, so sensible energy basically now, instead of measuring just a simple molecule, so we just take like a volume of air, for example. So we can measure the energy, and this energy is basically the velocity of the molecule. So the faster the molecule vibrates, or in some sense like move, this means that there's a higher temperature, all right? Latent energy will, is related to this graph over here. We know that when you boil, like let's say liquid, you will reach like a saturated temperature where you remain constant temperature for a while before the temperature starts to rise. And this is what we learned in primary school, the phase change, uh, like for example, from solid to liquid or liquid to solid. And then this is where, because when it's boiling, basically you are absorbing heat, right? So, as it is absorbing heat, it's actually uh, undergoing phase change. It's to overcome this latent energy in order to change its phase. Okay? Chemical energy is basically the atomic uh, bond, and nuclear energy is basically the strong bond within the nucleus of the atom. Not that it's very, uh, it's not applicable to this content yet. Lah. Okay? So, next. We need to discuss what's, uh, what are open and closed system. So, here I have two examples. I have the closed system and open system. On your left is the closed system. So closed system basically means there's a boundary over here. Okay, so this boundary, 
this boundary right can move up and down but the key thing about closed system is there will be no mass flow across this closed system okay? there will be no mass flow across the boundary however for open system for example a nozzle you see there's a boundary over here but at the same time right there's like holes over here so the mass can flow through so we talk about closed system we always say control volume so we only focus on just the volume inside but then there's mass flowing through so the difference between open and closed system and energy associated with closed system right there is two forms that's a heat transfer and work so as you can see heat can enter boundary so if you heat up like maybe like your pot the heat can travel through the pot so it's not limited by the boundary unless it's a, a adiabatic boundary la. basically some well insulated um, boundary and it's an adiabatic process okay work is basically i'll explain more later like the like force time distance basically some energy that that deals with work la. okay so i'll explain more so for other process adiabatic process basically there's no heat transfer across the boundary so this could be like a styrofoam or what so in a very ideal case right no heat will pass through this boundary but in the physical world, no such thing, lah. as in the heat will still pass through, but it's just whether at a faster or slower pace. Lah. So, but in the ideal process, right, in the adiabatic process also, there will be no heat transfer across the boundary. Well, energy transfer by work, basically, there's a, a few kinds. So, for example, this man pushing the box up. So, we know that work done is force time distance. So, that's the amount of work. Alright, then... It also can be uh be in the form of a compressor where you apply work into an airflow and you compress the air. Yeah. So this is another way of uh, doing work. And then we know that power is actually work over time. So this is something for you to take note in our practice question. Basically, here the work are energy transfer mechanism, see? So basically both uh can be recognized at the boundary of the system. Okay, so that means they can cross boundary. So this would mean that heat and work are boundary phenomena. Okay, system that have energy doesn't mean uh, when system have energy doesn't mean that they have heat or work. You know, so heat and work are separate things, and then both are associated with a process, not a state. Uh, I'll talk about uh, uh, state functions and path functions in the next few slides, and then both are path functions. Okay, I'll explain more. So basically, there's path function and state functions. Eh, sorry, path functions and state functions. So let uh, let uh, how about you imagine yourself to be this guy, and then you push this box. Okay, so you push this box up and down, up and down, up and down for many times. So you start at this point. You push it up hundred meters up. You push it down hundred meters down. So do you think you have applied work? Is the energy still conserved? In, in some sense, gravitational potential energy remains the same because they are at the same height, right? Because you push up, you push down. But the gravitational potential energy remains the same. However, the work is a lot more because the work, you push the work up, you push the box up, you are, you are doing work. And you push it back down, you are doing work. So basically, work is a path function. So it depends on like how far you push it, how long you push it, that kind of thing. And while state is basically, uh, if you are at this level, you push it up, push it down, it has the same gravitational potential energy. Okay, just like, just like uh, this uh, dropping of ball from, from a cliff. So there's, for example, you start off with this uh, energy over here, like you drop the ball, it has certain gravitational potential energy, you drop it down and gain kinetic energy, you hit the floor, it loses its kinetic energy, and then it loses its gravitational potential energy. Then you use the work to bring it all the way back up to gain the energy. Okay? Understand? Alright, next. And, also, and of course, in the closed system, this work right can also be modeled after the movement of the piston. So the force time distance, basically, this pressure times the area onto this piston applies a force. And then when this piston moves, a certain distance then that's a certain work done because force time distance so path process basically process a in this case uh, is a work so when you compress from uh sorry expand from maybe a smaller volume to bigger volume you follow a certain process and then it takes up this amount of energy this energy is basically the area underneath this line okay integrate pdv 
and then you will find the energy. Then process B, you realize, eh, same state what? State 1 and state 2 is the exact same. But then the path that it takes is different. Then you realize the energy is a lot more. Despite them having the same state, but because they take two different paths, that's why they have two different energy. So that's work done. Okay? Electrical work basically is like electrical heating. So we know that in our electronics or electrical engineering, we know that uh, power is uh, voltage times current, which is in watts. Okay? So when you, you know, watts is basically energy over time. So when you integrate with respect to time, you get energy. Over here it says kilojoule, but could be joule, depending, depending on the units that you use. Lah. Okay? And this also means that it's actually VI uh, over the change of time. Okay, so there are many ways to measure the power, so VI, I square R, V square over R. Alright, so this is the electrical work, and you see it crosses the boundary of the system. Next, mechanical work, as I said, uh, work is basically force and distance, where S is the distance. Okay, then you can integrate F dS to find work. Shaft work, you also can you also can find, because we know that torque is force times the perpendicular distance. So we can find force. Okay. So, once we know force, we need to find distance. So distance is just 2 pi r, this is the basically circumference of a circle, n is the number of revolutions. Okay? So, using work is equal to force and distance, I just use this, multiply by this, and I can find the work. Okay, if you want, if you want to find power, you use 2 pi, then we will be use n dot. n dot basically is rpm times the torque. Alright? So next. Spring work. At the same time, we know that everything is related to force and distance. Uh. So, you see, the work of the spring is actually force and distance. The change in distance. Okay, so that's the force. So, when you want to find work right, you just integrate this force with respect to dx. So, kx with respect to dx, you integrate, and you find out to be half kx squared, where x is the change in uh, length. Uh. Okay, so that's the work of the spring. Not necessarily have to be kilojoules, but you can think of the units. Uh, if we use kilonewtons, then this will be kilojoules. If this newton, then this will be joules. So it depends on the k constant also. Now we know that the first law of thermodynamics says that uh, there's a conservation of energy. So quite common sense. Uh, you just need to know that total energy entering the system minus total energy leaving the system equals the total change in the energy. And total change in energy is energy at final state minus energy at initial state. As you can see over here, if I apply a work of 10 kilojoules, that means my my fluid inside would gain 10 kilojoules of energy, assuming this is an adiabatic process, lah, so no heat escape from the boundary. And here are some practice questions for you to try out. So this is the first practice question. You may pause and try it. I'll upload the answers shortly. So this is the first question. This is the second question. And this would be the last question. Okay, so that's all for chapter two. I'll be outlining the uh, practice question answers uh, in a while. All right.